What weird thing did somebody tell you that they shouldn't have felt so comfortable telling you? Dude pays me at work, then tells me he can't come. He can have an orgasm, but then needs to use a straw to get it all out. Managed a restaurant and a man was there to service the building. HVAC or something. He seems anxious and starts rattling on about his girlfriend and then her brother and how said brother f***ed a cow. Immediately apologizes. I don't know why I said that. I probably shouldn't have told you that. Sorry. My co-worker went into great detail. Including a hand-drawn diagram. About how constipated she was after one of her c-sections. She said she was so uncomfortable that she asked her husband to try to dig some of the poo out of her butt with his finger. So she put a towel down on the bed, laid on her side, and he got to work. After some successful digging she rolled over and noticed a butter knife on the bedside table and asked what it was doing there to which he responded well, it was too hard for my fingers. We are nurses. She told this story at the desk to a group of at least 5 people. We were all mortified. I met a professional acquaintance at a friend's show one night. We knew each other vaguely, having met a couple of times, so we started having small talk. The guy obviously had gotten one too many beers, and felt it was a great time to tell me all about his dumb moves from his early adulthood. How his fiancé cheated on him with his best friend and how he became an alcoholic. Alright. Definitely awkward. But manageable so far. It took a turn for the worse when he suddenly felt comfortable enough to describe. In details. How he and his friends had raped a teenage boy that was blackout drunk. The acquaintance and his friends were drunk and thought it would be fun to do that while the boy was literally unconscious and unresponsive. I nope the fuck out of the conversation right after that and hope I'll never run into him again. When I was younger I hung out with a group of friends who drank a lot but were harmless. I guess one guy thought because we partied he could tell us about the time a girl fell asleep while having she's with him. He took offense so he finished on her face, peed in her shoes and stole all the alcohol from her house. We told him that's not what we were about and it was really awkward. I used to have this kinda racist hairdresser who'd tell me about life, her son, etc. Anyway, she tells me one day about how her son went to this party and there was a gay guy there. Now everyone was making a big deal about this and like, you know, all the dudes were teasing each other a bob at it. Which is just honestly horrifying to me, that it's like, a focal point of the party that there's a dude who is gay just minding his own business. But anyway, her son passes out drunk. All his friends there decide that what they're going to do is fill a condom with conditioner and put it in his asshole. So when he woke up he'd think the gay guy raped him. Freaked him the fuck out. And my hairdresser was like, yeah. He's still pretty messed up by it, I'm like, lady, your son was sexually assaulted by his friends, and she was just brushing it off, like they didn't have sex with him, they weren't attracted to him, and I'm like, number they spread his ashiks and forced an object into his rectum, he was sexually assaulted, and she looked really fuck surprised and started piecing together that this might be why her son is not okay. Like, oh maybe that's not just a prank huh? A strange co-worker, whom I wasn't ever close with, decided to tell me at work, across the entire office, that she and her husband were having marital problems due to lack of sex. He wanted more sex, but since she wasn't trying to get pregnant, she didn't see the point and said he needed to get over it. This happened loudly. Out of nowhere and with no prompting. What made it more uncomfortable was that she was our HR person. I don't know if this qualifies but some drunk girl said I would be a nice weekday only boyfriend very casually and that felt like a very backhanded compliment to drop on me so suddenly. 
Let's not call that a backhanded compliment and say it's just a compliment. The only implied insult is that she's too immature to have a successful relationship. A while ago, my now wife, then, my fiancé, and I were preparing to get married here in Austin. We spent several Sundays visiting some of the churches in the area that might serve as the ceremony venue to get a feel for them. We visited one beautiful, fairly large, older church near downtown. At the appropriate time in the service, the minister priest, an older gentleman, roughly late 60s-ish, started giving an odd sermon about tithing and how the parishioners had been letting the church down and in a way they were stealing from God by not giving enough. It was a bit of a strange one, and it didn't seem well constructed and thought out, much more on the fly than sermons I was used to, anyway. After about 10 minutes of this, he wrapped up and asked everyone to bow their heads for prayer then immediately walked off the stage and started walking down the aisle. My wife and I were about 2 stroke 3 of the way back and in an empty row. The service was not particularly well attended. I'm thinking to myself, well, that was kind of a weird. What's he doing? He's heading toward us. Oh, God, while the congregation was still mid-group prayer, he walked to our row and then slid all the way in until he was right next to me. Everyone was watching him, and now us, as they are fathered, or whatever it was. We finished the prayer and then sat down for the offering and a song. He then leaned over and whispered, good morning. We shook hands and he continued. I wanted to let you know that I just had a mental breakdown up there a moment ago. Oh. Hey. That's alright. I. Thought it was. Great I stammered in reply. You're kind. But no. I'm kind of falling apart. I saw you two come in and recognized you were new. I didn't want you to take that sermon as typical of our congregation. I have to get going. It was a pleasure meeting you both, and he got up and walked right out the back door. We didn't choose that church. Me. Sits down for my lunch break at work. Random co-worker comes and sits down and says to me, so I've been watching cartoon monster porn. My sister told me she was getting her tonsils out, so that she would give better head. When I was in college I went to the study abroad office to inquire about a scholarship to study in Japan for a year. Instead I ended up in a room with a weirdo student worker who had just spent a year backpacking in SC Asia trying to talk me into going to Thailand because prostitutes were so cheap and plentiful. I'm pretty sure he lost his virginity there. He told me all he knew about how to tell the regular massage places from the sexy ones. He told me in great detail about his escapades and exactly how much it was for different calibers or girls. Also, I was a 19 years old and a girl. Years ago, I lived in Florida. My girlfriend, now wife, and I went to a Chili's one night to get some drinks with her co-workers. After they left, we went back inside to the bar for one more drink because it was still early and we lived nearby. This older guy walks in and sits down a few stools away from us and immediately starts giving us some light-hearted sh** about football. Then notices my girlfriend typing something on her phone. Within 60 seconds of meeting us, he decided to drop this. Oh, you like looking things up on them phones huh? Google my name. We google his name and the first result is a news article that names him as the victim of an attempted murder-suicide by his wife. She shot him in the head, then shot herself in the head right after. She died. He didn't. Police came after a call of shots fired. They found him unconscious but alive. Med flighted him to a hospital and he woke up later that day. And that was his icebreaker story. I have to share this story because it's so similar and just happened on Saturday night. 
Me and my wife and my buddy were driving home from Christmas and the interstate got shut down so we had to stop for the night and get a hotel. Next to the hotel was an Applebee's which we would never eat at but we figured fuck it why not. So we go in and order some half price apps at the bar to take back to the room. My buddy was joking around with the bartender and I don't know what prompted her to say this but she just went deadpan and looked at us and was like my husband just got murdered. We didn't know what to say so we just kinda looked at each other and chugged our drinks and walked out. It was weird. Also I've had diarrhea since that meal but that is not really related to the story. Kind of related. In a previous job where I was in senior management, I had an employee come to me and ask to speak privately. He said he needed a few days off. He had just found out his son was being molested by a neighbor. He needed to be at home and deal with his son in the police, but didn't want anyone else to know. For obvious reasons. I told him to take the time off and that I would take care of things for him. I told scheduling and HR that he was to be given 3 days off. And the HR manager pestered me to know why. I told her I couldn't say. But it was a legit reason. And that's that. She was pissed. Demanded I tell her. And even got the regional manager involved. I told them to drop it. That I was going into details. It was well within my power to make that decision, but the HR and regional managers were both cunts. They told me if I didn't tell them, there would be consequences for me. I told them clearly to drop it, that it was a sensitive subject and the employee took me into his confidence. End of story. The employee wasn't one to take excessive time off, and he had sick and vacation time. So I told them there was no reason to make this an issue. The weird thing is, I didn't have a particularly good relationship with this employee. Not sure why he told me, as he was friends with another of the senior managers, who could have taken care of this for him. But I was known to be an employee first manager, and I still am. I suppose he trusted me, despite us having some differences. It was quite heavy burden to take on, knowing what this guy was going though. But you don't always get to pick your battles. Sometimes you just have to fight them. I never did share the reason why I allowed the time off. Even after several of the bosses cornered and pestered me. In the end, I was let go for others reasons. Standing up for another employee, but feel this incident contributed to it. Gem. I would do it all over again. Right is right. Chatting with another mom at the park. Now we can chat about some pretty weird things. Like, discussing your kids pooping habits would be a normal conversation. Even to some extent discussing how things are going the bedroom isn't that weird. But I've had some weird things other moms have confided to me. The one that stands out was a mom who confessed she was a closeted lesbian. In a loveless marriage who has a huge crush on her teenage son's girlfriend. It got even weirder too. This isn't weird but disturbing and I was just randomly told this a couple of days ago. So there is this co-worker. She's so sweet and cute and funny but we don't really hang out because we're on different teams and work different hours. She was getting something from my section and I smiled at her and said, How was your Christmas and she said, Horrible. I was sexually assaulted. By my grandfather. I didn't know what to say. I just stood there, eyes wide, jaw to the floor. She stopped, looked at me and said, I wasn't even planning on telling anyone but you just have this air about you that seems comforting and trustworthy. We hugged and I told her if she ever needed to talk, she can message me anytime. I told my BF, who also works with her, and he said, you wanna go find the old f- and kill him that would be great but I really don't want to go to prison. We'll just be there for her when she needs us. Still heart wrenching. <laughs>